Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming back. Anyone new this year? Oh, good. Well, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, and if you're new out there, we're happy to have you too. Happy Lionsgate. This is going to be a fun day. We are going to be here until about 7.30 Eastern. And not only will I be doing live channeling, but Ethan will be here and Barb doing on the energy transfer. And we have Brooklyn Rain with us today, who's doing a water activation and a lot of other really cool stuff that you don't want to miss. So we're going to have short breaks in between and new live streams. So if you're home, just settle in. We will be hanging with you all day. Uh, and I'm here to do live channeling. So if you're not familiar, uh, I'm a trans channel, but I also do some conscious channeling. And we're with the Flower of Life, and I'm the executive director of the organization Ethan Fox uh, oversees and is the founder. And we are focused on raising human consciousness, which is really important right now, which I think is why we're here and the crux of what's happening on the planet today. Um, in terms of my work, I have a new course coming up that I'm super excited to get out and I just put the finishing touches on it the other day. So I do channel courses, my Lightworker Inner Circle series, and I'm on number 16. And if you're interested, you can check those out on my website. They're all there for you to peruse. And, and what's cool about the description is it's a channel description. So there's a lot of interesting topics there that you don't even have to dive into the course. You can just read the course outline and get a lot of cool tidbits about things that the guides are sharing. Uh, so 16 is going to be all about the true warrior spirit. And when I got that title, I was a little like, ew, like warrior sounds like we're in for a fight, which I didn't like so much. But I was working with Lakshmi, who's new for me, and Artemis, who's really new for me. And they were like, no, you don't understand. The true warrior is not someone who fights. Right? The, the true warrior spirit is compassionate and loving and strength and courage and you know all these things that come from within and that's really what the course is about. So if you were with me for 15, it, it's a little spin off of that, but it takes us more collective. And something that is really unique about this course that I've never done in another, well, two things actually that are really unique about this course that I've never done is we're going to be creating, I don't want to call it an altar, I want to call it maybe a portal or we're all going to be connecting a grid system where we are going to be assisting the collective, which I think is so needed right now. And one of the aspects of being a true warrior is being of service. And so many of us, I think, feel like we are not of service and we don't know how to start that process. And this course is getting us there just by saying we're going to create this space where together we are going to focus collectively on the highest and best and whatever else they have in mind, I'm not really sure. But I think it's gonna be really fun. So we're actually going to gather some things and create each week this really cool focal point. Um, and you can use it for prayer or affirmation, meditation, and all these awesome things. Uh, and that'll come out mid-August. So the course will start August 31st. And um, you all who've been in my Inner Circle programs always get the pre-sale announcement a couple weeks before. So watch for that on email and on Facebook. And I'll also share, and I always, you know, every, every month I'm like, the book's still coming. It is, I swear, I promise. Um, the community page is up and running and we do have people on it in the background who are testing it out from the team. And we're working out little bugs. So we're tweaking it, making sure all of the mechanics are working properly. Um, and then the book will start rolling out to inner circle communities. So stay tuned for that. It's on the way. Super excited to share that with everyone. Uh, and other than that, um, there's a lot going on. So let's dive in. Let's dive in. So what I like to do in this um, event, which is about two hours, we'll be together, is update everyone personally on some of the themes that have been coming in and things that I've been observing. Uh, and then we do a trans-channeled experience. And I love to make it interactive. So if anyone in the room has questions or things you want me to discuss, feel free. We have a mic we'll pass around in the room so everyone out there can hear. And you guys post in the chat. So we can take questions for the channeling portion, but also um, while I'm speaking. And I've heard some of this, I've been getting some feedback. Some people have told me that when I do these updates without being in a trans-channeled state, it's very helpful. So let me know. I, I hope it is. And that's what my attempt to do is, is to lead in before we get all of those downloads, which can be pretty technical sometimes and overwhelming. 
to translate what I'm picking up on. So with that, uh, last time we were together, I was talking about how this time on the planet feels a lot like identifying our true source because we have so many different sources that we're tuning into. And really, I think that's the crux of moving between dimensions is the way I understand it in the fifth dimension, we source completely differently than what we are used to in the third. And I've even seen this visually in session where I, I see the energy field. And it almost looks like these little roads, you know, or meridians or connections that run outside of our energy field. And it siphons for us, you know, we receive financial abundance and partnerships and all of these things, but it's very limited. And it's not the true organic way we're meant to source, which is far more expansive, right? So think of it as going from these little, you know, conditional you know, ideas, beliefs, things we have to do to receive, to go on straight to the source. And that's what I think we're working out right now. So I want to share um, a personal story, which I don't share too much of. They have all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on. Like I think I could, you know, go on forever about my little experiences in my house and all this kind of stuff. But, but I, I uh, coming off of Lightworker 15, which I know some of you are in, I, I really, I guess, dove into personal work. It just, it just set me up for that, and it, it led me into this daily meditative state where. I had received some synchronistic messages and things about my own energy field and vulnerabilities and things that I needed to tune into and, and understand better. So I started going out to the nature preserve. I found my little meditation spot and every day brought my journal and I would sit there and tune in to look at what I needed to know. And I asked my guides to help me with this. And, and I think, first of all, before I get into the story, it's possible for everybody to do this because we all see energy fields completely differently. And that's one thing that happens in sessions so much is people will come to me and say, I see grids, all of a sudden I see grids. What does that mean? Does anyone else see it like this? And often what the guides will say is, this is how you work with energy. So when you see a grid, you're actually um, interpreting something so that you can interact with it in a certain way. So if you see a grid in this room, you actually have the ability to work with the grid and clear energies or move energies or whatever that might be. All right, so, so for me, this works a little bit differently. I, and a little less complex, <laughs> I see rooms. I see literal houses, like rooms, you know, when I look at someone's energy field. And I, I do have this strange kind of container that I work in, and I should say it's strange, it's not strange. I have a container that I work in, and everybody's housed in a certain area. You know, like I've said this before, the Pleiadians are up here, the Arcturians are here, they all have their little house, their little container. So naturally, when I started to tune into my energy field, I went into a room in a house, <laughs> which looked just like a room, you know, with a window and, you know, things, and I immediately recognized there were some things there that shouldn't have been in the room. And so I have been working a lot with the Lemurians, called them in, and one of my very personal and dear, dear guides is Miriam. If you guys are familiar with Miriam uh, from the Bible, she is part of that whole Magdalena, I feel, collective, and she's been with me for the past couple of years. She's such a sweet and loving presence. And so she was helping me to do whatever I needed to do and understand what I needed to understand so that I knew what was there and what I needed to do to clear it. And it was awesome. You know, it was every day going in and it was looking better and better. And then she was like, well, now that's all gone. So we need to wash the floors. We need to paint the walls. I was like, oh, this is great. You know, it's a whole new room. I got this whole new container, right? And so I'm checking it every day. It's looking great. And I stepped away for a couple of days. I guess that container is perfect. <laughs> And then about three days later, I went back in, expecting to see it just as perfect as I left it. And the whole side of the room was blown out, like a bomb had dropped in shrapnel. It was just, I was like, oh, was so discouraged. And here Marion's standing beside me. And I said, what in the heck happened? <laughs> Who did this and why did they do it? And she said, 
you don't need to know. We just need to fix it. And I was like, mm, hang on a second. <laughs> like, I don't want this to happen ever again. So if I don't know why this happened, then how am I supposed to keep this container, this room pure and, you know, full of light? And she looked at me very stern, but lovingly and said, you don't need to know. We just need to fix it. <laughs> it's like, okay. And for me as a channel, and you guys know, the, the guides never say no to answering question, do they? Ever. Anybody could ask me anything ever online and you always get an answer. And here I am like, <laughs> why can't I get an answer? So I fixed it. We fixed it. We built the wall. We put the window back in, cleared it all up. And I went about my day. And then the next day I came back in to check it. And the, everything looked good, but the window was cracked. So kind of like that little spider web crack you get in your windshield on the car when a rock hits. I saw this little crack was like fanning out and I was thinking, oh no, this isn't good. So I asked her why, I was like, you know, why is the window cracked? And she said, well, that's how the whole room became vulnerable because you are this container and that window is how you look out into the world. And so the window is cracked because I was starting to go into the mode where I was looking out into the world in a way that had the potential to blow the whole side off my room again. I was like, all right, that's valuable information, right? So we fixed the window. And, uh, you know, after these things happen, I feel like the best thing we can do is be present because our guides are always, always giving us good information. We just have to be present to see all the things they offer to help us implement and put in place what they just taught us. So I come out of that meditation and I'm, I'm looking on you know, Facebook and I see some posts. And I don't know if this is true, so don't hold me to it. And who knows if anything on Facebook is true, right? But somebody posted uh, Whole Foods had gotten rid of all the colloidal silver from their shelves across the board. And I was like, God bless it, it's a cabal. They did it. They won the old grid. It's all coming back. Like we're going in the wrong direction. And then I remember the window. I'm like, all right, so maybe not. Maybe we're cutting out the middleman. You know, maybe whoever manufactures the colloidal silver is now going to get all of the profit. Maybe it's a small business. And at a time when small businesses are really getting hit hard, we are now going to be able to pull that back together because we're going to go straight to the source as opposed to going somewhere that is not. And the more I played with this, the better I felt because I thought, hey, this could be a really huge positive, right? I mean, we know, we all know who owns Whole Foods. Do we really want to contribute more to that scenario? Right, all this stuff. So, so I'm thinking, huh, this could actually be a good sign, <laughs> you know, like this could be a really big deal. So it shifted me so much that every time I went back into that container and checked, which I did every day, <laughs> just to make sure, everything was intact. The window was solid, the, the wall was intact, the doors were on, everything looked good. So to me, this is a really huge parallel, I think, to what happens in the outer world. Because not only are we operating in this container, right, that, that we are viewing, everyone else has a container too, which is completely different. So just like I see that room in someone else's grids, we all have this different way of looking at the world, interpreting energy, defining what's happening, and it could never be the same as anyone else. So the container is our soul. We are the container for holding God and holding a perception that is mirror reflecting back to us that God in action. And based on how we see it, it has everything to do with how our container expands and purifies and grows. So in the midst of all of this, I'm channeling and editing my written stuff, my books, and I come across this phrase, or I will say a, a passage from the Pleiadians. And they say something about if consciousness expands and we attempt to fit ourselves into 
a, a smaller model of that consciousness or a smaller container than what consciousness has expanded to, we're going to feel the discord, constant discomfort and constant resistance. So it's kind of like outgrowing your container, you know, outgrowing your room. Your perception is changed, but you're trying to fit it back into a room that it doesn't belong. And that's what I think is going on for the most part, even, you know, globally, not just personally, that we're attempting to fit an expanded consciousness into a container that it can't hold any longer. So what I was shown also was this new grid, old grid transition. And I talk about that a lot. It's very technical, but you know, I've always kind of looked at it as we're creating in the new grid and that's where we want to go. But what we have to do to get there is we have to have a starting point and we have to, to walk from that starting point into the next container. So what Miriam taught me, I believe, is truly the crux of how we navigate this experience simpler than what we've been doing. And that is how we perceive, how we question, um, how we communicate with ourselves and others about that has everything to do with what we see. What comes into our personal hologram and how we walk between and bridge these two different uh, realities. And then there was Mary Magdalene and she came in and offered this really beautiful quote or transmission, I'll call this just a piece of it. And she said, you know, the less clarity you have, the more access you have to your mastery. And I was like, man, I thought it was opposite. <laughs> like, you know, are we all striving for clarity? Like we want clarity, we want to know, we want to know what's going on, what are the details, who's doing this, how do we stop it? But what she's saying is the same as what Miriam taught me, right? If we are striving for constant clarity and knowing, we miss out on the simplicity of how our container is meant to work and how we are interacting with God and experience in every moment. So consider this, I'm gonna flip it around now. Not only do we look out the window at what's happening on the planet, but Everyone else has a window that's looking at us. So this is where I think a lot of the conflict is coming in. And uh, I'll share another story real quickly that was just very profound, very profound in my life. Um, I was at a SETI ranch. How many of you are familiar with a SETI out in Washington? It's, a, it's like a portal where you go and you can see ships and it's super cool. And, okay. Um, I was asked to speak there at a conference, at their annual conference. Ethan and I actually went, and uh, I was at the, my worst of the worst. <laughs> I was having this really bad allergic reaction, and I was swollen and red, and I was putting ice packs on my face, but I had to get up and talk in front of like 150, 200 people, which is like the worst thing ever. So I literally felt like, I don't know the elephant woman in a dress, you know, I just, it's like, you know, the worst thing you, you get up in front of people when you're at your worst, but you got to do what you got to do, you know? So got up, did my thing, I channeled. And then there was this big line of people that wanted to talk to me and they all had very complex questions, you know, like, oh, I see ships and, you know, I have empathy and energy sensitivities. And there was this one woman and I hope she's watching, but I don't think she is because I don't think she's on the earth. <laughs> who stood in line, the very end of this line, and where other people were like getting out and saying, I'll just catch up with her later, she waited and waited and waited. And then she got up to me when everybody was done and she looked me dead in the eye. And she said, she said, I have watched every single one of your videos on YouTube. And she said, you are a far more beautiful in person than you are online. And I, I just broke down. I mean, I just, about the tears, I just, and it was so perfect and angelic and simple at a time when I just felt my worst. It taught me that I never know how anybody sees me. I, the only thing I have is my own window and everyone else has theirs. And it's good to remember you know, for everything right now, because sometimes we're trying to convince people of what we know when 
their window and their container could never see it the same way that we do. Never. We could never see it that way. And I have always remembered that to this day. Whenever I am judging myself harshly or I'm looking out at the world, I remember this woman saying this to me that was so completely opposite of the way that I felt and what I believed of myself in that moment. So imagine if we were to all share that kind of experience with others, right? To see the best in them. Yeah, I'm, I'm the eternal Girl Scout leader. You know, we always leave things better than we found them. And that's what I think that it's just such a simple thing to remember right now in this energy. Even though we can't ever truly see eye to eye on things other than those that resonate with us and we're meant to experience things with, we can leave everything better than we found it, you know? And that's why I think this time is really showing us a lot of opportunity right now to shift. Not only personally, because that's really where my focus has been, honestly. It's just been this really inward kind of personal, wow, simplistic but powerful revelations about who I am and how I see the world, but how it ties in so nicely to what's going on on the planet with the energies. Any comments, questions online? Is there a lot of physical clearing going on right now? My body has been feeling hit, like yeah. it's been hit by a bus for no logical reason. And I've been working with someone to try to help release stuck things. But I've also been hearing others with similar stories. How can we make it go smoother? Well, remember the container analogy that I just brought in. Our physical bodies are a container too, but they work a little different than our energy fields because they vibrate in a slower speed. So even thinking about today, like the lion's gate, for example, this is a time when we have really high energies and, an in, and I'm feeling it up here, trust me, really high you know, influx of energy. And our bodies take a little longer, unfortunately, to adjust to that. And that's why when we make changes in consciousness or we raise our vibration, things in our physical life tend to unravel a little bit and it takes a little time to catch up. But you know, I, I also, and this has been going on with me personally, I also think the, the sensitivities that we have are so accentuated right now. Um, Food-wise for me has been so, so huge. Just, and I'm not talking about you know, organic, raw you know, stuff, but, but because I'm becoming so sensitive, I'm finding that little intricacies in the outer world, if I slip up, are just tremendously like, huge setbacks for me, <laughs> right? How many of you experience that, right? It's like, you eat so good and so pure, you're, you know, you've done so many things in your life to detoxify spiritually and otherwise, it doesn't have to be physical. And then you're like, man, why are all those people eating pizza and drinking beer and I can't do it? You just like, there's something about that in your body that is having a hard time catching up. And that's kind of, you know, no, not judging, but I'm just saying across the board, it's just an example of how that works out because it's not just what we do physically, it's what is happening non-physically. You know, and there's an interesting parallel to this too with, I'm going to want to say the M word, but um, where the guides have brought up what we're attempting to actually control in physical is such a stark contrast or message to us about what we've attained in non-physical. You know, it's like the reliance upon who we are versus physical things is really coming to the forefront right now, I think. And, and, and again, things are real. We have reality. We have real constructs of energy that we have to deal with. But at the same time, there's a part of us that really needs to hold the vibration of what we believe. And that doesn't start out there, you know? And that's what I see a lot of in, in personal session is people are coming to me with a lot of questions about physical reality because let's face it, it's a crazy time and we need stuff shifting really fast. And the guides are always pulling it right back in to say right now, everything that you rely upon inside has the most tremendous effect on what you're sourcing on the outside. Because we create our own personal hologram and it locks in somewhere on the planet and it draws experiences for us. And that doesn't mean that every time we have a negative experience, we screwed up. <laughs> Let's just say that first, because if we don't have that contrast or that, you know, negative experience, we don't have anything to grow from. 
you know, we don't have anything to move us along or to expand us. So just like the side of my container blew out, I mean, Miriam was great because she could have said, you did all of this stuff wrong. And then I would have been focused on all of the stuff I did wrong and judging myself and feeling bad. And, you know, I would have come back and the whole other wall would have probably been blown out. But the fact that she just directed me on fixing it very simply, I think that goes a long way when we look at what's happening on the planet because it can feel very complex. There's a lot of perceived consequences in physical that we're having to deal with in a lot of different areas. But consequences don't really come from the outer world. We think they do, but it's such a complex hologram in such a complex matrix that we're intersecting with that we are choosing, you know, in every moment how we interact with that. So we have to kind of step out of the realm of all of these physical consequences and, you know, perceived truths and things that are happening to really see where we fit and what we want to intersect with and how we align with it. And that's really where the guides have been taking not only every personal session, but also my courses lately is vibrational alignment. So any other questions? I sleep very well, but when I get up, I feel that I've just finished fighting a battle. Yeah. What is this about? <laughs> Everyone around me feels the same. Yes. I was just going to say that everybody around you is the same. I can't tell you how many sessions I've had like that lately. Everyone's time traveling right now. And I, it's hard to say because everyone's unique. So there may be something happening in your personal energy field or in your codes that's accelerating time travel for you right now. Um, but I think in general as a whole, we're just gonna have more of that because the energies on the planet are so high and we've done so much work. You know, Our technology is really aligned very well in order to do that. So what happens is when we release resistance and we go to sleep at night because our mind isn't overactive and judging and doubting, our light body is just free to go and do whatever it needs to do. And I did have a client recently who was really struggling with this because she said, you know, I'm just not resting. You know, I have all of these you know, memories of beings and timelines and things, but I need to sleep. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, what the guide said to her is there are times we ebb and flow through time travel. And the reason for this, for her in particular, is she's a channel. And so she was actually um, accessing and receiving insights and messages and information and downloads that were necessary for the next leg of her journey. And they just said, be patient, you know, allow yourself to be in that space for a while and rest where you can and know that everything that you're receiving is purposeful and there will come a time when it won't happen anymore. And I, you know, that happens to me a lot too. I do go through periods of time where I time travel a lot at night and then for a while I just rest really well and then it happens again. So I think it could be a lot of things, but um, ultimately I think it's really good. What, what the guys always mention too, is I'll, I'll share this, is a lot of people time travel kind of willy nilly, like they just don't know why they're traveling or where they're going or what they're doing and it just happens automatically. And anytime we try to guide something, um, we state intention or we practice it, it typically comes into a more comfortable state. And that's what happened with me with the channeling. And this can happen to me at times as well, where I'm just channeling all day. <laughs> you know, when I first started channeling, I was just channeling whoever and whatever. And I didn't know that I had to direct it and state intention and do all these things. And this, when I started to do that, it just fell into a really nice flow and easy pattern. So I think if we set set intention before we go to sleep, um, I intend to sleep and rest well. If I time travel, I intend to go to the highest and best place for my soul's evolution and good and to serve. And what begins to happen is we still time travel, but we balance. So we get what we need personally and to be of service. That's what I've seen. Questions, thoughts? Okay, I just want to go back to um, you saying time traveling during sleeping. Okay, the first time I heard that, I was it wasn't time traveling. It was just like be intentional before you go to sleep. Yeah. So I do think it's important to touch on um, utilizing your phone, tablet, or even a pen or a pen before you go to sleep and practicing that for 90 days so you can have intentional time travel. 
You mean like kind of taking a, making it a real important direction. Right. Through that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dreams. Yeah, I think that's great. Any any time, and it's personal for everyone. I mean, I think if that works for you, that's amazing. You know, everyone has different reasons for time traveling. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you even a funny story recently. And my daughter, uh, my my daughters, I love God. They're they're just very gifted, very gifted. So my youngest daughter uh, lives at home with me, and she's really into uh, mythology and all the you know Greek gods and God. And she communicates with them all the time. And and uh, <laughs> she had kind of a strange thing happen in her room, and. Uh, and she, it freaked her out and we're like, well, okay, so we're gonna go investigate and figure out what's happening. And I said, let's just go near your bed and let's kind of feel, because I had sensed she opened up a portal. He said, Does it, do you feel like you opened up a portal? She was like, I don't know, maybe. So we kind of put our hand, we just started sensing right over the top of her bed. And both of us felt it right away. There was this pull, there was this one area where there was this, this draw. And we worked with it and we started, you know, getting more information and talking to the guides about how do we neutralize it? Is this good? Is it bad? Like, what is it doing? How did it open? And we got some really specific guidance on how to work with it and kind of, you know, bring it to more neutral so she could be comfortable and, you know, continue to do what she was doing, but not be disturbed by such an intense, you know, energy. So I've seen it across the board where people just have all of these interesting and amazing experiences at night, but usually the energy that like the, the container, the bedroom that we're in is somehow impacted by that too, because we're bringing energy back with us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, no, I love what you're saying though. I think that that's amazing. And I have gone through periods of time where I actually keep a um, legal pad under my pillow. <laughs> And I don't like to turn the light on at night, but I'll just pull it out and just scratch. Just even though, and I know I can read it when I wake up, just so I, I can remember what happened. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. I think it's good stuff. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like right in the space, there's just this. I'm burning up. This is like heat up. If it's the lion's gate or what. So we're going to do a trans-channeled experience and we're going to open the space to all of your intentions and whatever needs to come in for our highest and best good and everyone out there as well. Uh, we do take donations and we're going to pass a basket. If you cannot donate, that is absolutely fine. If you can, it goes towards the rental of the space today and all of our other projects that we're working on, we put the overage into. Uh, if you're online and you want to donate, because we always get this question, you can go to Flower of Life. Uh, in Oh, go to the expo, awakenempoweredexpo.com, and there's a donate button there that you can push. Um, so I don't know who we're going to work with today, but we always get a general message for everyone, and we'll just flow with that for a little bit, and then we will take questions. Uh, this is a vibrational experience, so um, try not to get too mentally involved and overwhelmed <laughs> if possible, because I know it's a lot. You're getting exactly what you need. So even if you just want to meditate and be in the energy um, of the transmission, that's perfect. That's perfect. And I'll always tell you who's here and who's speaking as they come in and out because we're going to work with multiple guides, teachers, and collectives. All right. And we are going to work with the Syrians today. I'm going to welcome them as they step in. As all of us come together, we are offering to you a reflection of yourselves. We are in such a state of honor and respect for the transition that you are walking as a human collective. We as very ancient beings have observed this in so many different experiences and situations, not only in our own star system, uh, but also within and upon the earth in many different dimensions. And we come today to explain uh, a vibrational anomaly that we see taking place that we believe is of utmost importance and that many have the opportunity to tune into deliberately if they so desire. And we begin by saying this has no limitation to the synchronistic date that you find yourselves uh, experiencing today, which is, um, we'll say, a capture of what 
within Gaia is meant to support the highest manifestation potentials, not only of you individually, but of all. It goes beyond this because we actually see multiple windows of opportunity right now that are coming through Earth and showing us humans are beginning to let go of areas where they hold the most resistance. As we look out at your planet, and we know that there is so much taking place that is difficult to understand, we see that there have been times of great confusion and also times of stillness and peace. This is very important and purposeful to consider because not unlike the split of timelines, which is discussed quite often in these circles, within your own life, you may be experiencing the dichotomy of the timeline shift from a more restrictive grid to one that is uh, more peaceful and loving and abundant. And in these times, you may recognize that there's conflict and you may lose your way attempting to gain footing by retrieving something outside of you. And there are times of surrender where we see many of you retreating and stepping outside of a very complex and difficult vibration and assimilating your own. And this has created within the earth, um, we'll say a, a series of activations and meridian crossings that we see as elemental and highly uh, beneficial for humanity. And we will give the analogy so you understand what we are speaking of. Many of you are familiar with working on the intergalactic grids or the earth grid system going to portals and understanding how energy flows and intersects. This is a very technical way of perceiving what we are talking about. It's a very deliberate way also of looking at how you intersect with energy. But many of you forget that you are electromagnetic. There is a part of you that holds an ever-present charge. And that charge comes not from only your direction of energy, but it comes from a deliberate connection to the earth. So where some may gather in very deliberate meridian crossings and significant portal locations, there are actually these very significant uh, opportunities taking place in your own life, in your own personal hologram and experience. And the reason for this is that you are not only electromagnetic, but you are part of a harmonic collective that goes beyond the earth. Those of us who are here being cosmic family members hold a direct connection to your DNA. That DNA being crystal and you becoming more crystal now has proposed a solution that exists in your life for every personal problem. Those solutions are not meant to be ascertained by you directly, and we know it is your desire to do so. Because if they were, they would actually limit how much the universe wants to support you. But the reason they exist is because in the midst of conflict, you have found stillness. You have put opposite potentials into a state of neutral. By allowing yourself to be immersed in what is happening in physical, but also retaining a more non-physical rigidity or stability. And you may ask, is it necessary to get involved with the outer world? And our answer to this is, you were always meant to do that. You wouldn't be here in physical at this time if you weren't meant to somehow interact within it. It is how you interact that has all of the, um, the wellspring of energy and information that creates for you in abundance the experience you desire to, to uh, immerse within. So what we see taking place is something that Earth herself knows very well. It's a gateway or a synchronistic opening that happens where energy is channeled far more vigorously, where the flow of the river that may have been stalled by the dam is now 
uh, no longer encumbered. And that is good news because we see all of you being supported and nourished so much more by universal energies than ever before. It is not to say you were ever separate of them, but what's happened in your personal life and what's happened within Earth is, is a balancing of sorts. And what we come to offer is that chronic balance needs to be considered by all of you at this time. Because as you carve out personal time in your life to find that balance and to embody it in whatever form is most comfortable to you, you are allowing Earth herself and every living being upon it to reap the benefit of what you put into motion. And this is the sense of service that often goes unnoticed. What you are doing in your personal life to find harmony has an immediate and direct benefit on everything that is taking place in the outer world. And this is where those solutions and resources begin to flow greater. Because what you've now realized and what we've installed within your consciousness is the knowing that every breath you take has purpose. And that if it is deliberately and intentionally taken in order to support your chronic alignment, you will find time and time again that you are supported and receiving everything that is needed in each moment to step further into the future. Now, as Assyrians, we also have the ability to see within the Akashic realm to look at the earthly records and not only identify past, but see what is beginning to take shape for your future. And we see the inevitable passage of all of you into a new reality. It is just the undetermined physical or linear time span through which that will take place that you are currently working out. The more who claim it in this very moment are like that river sending nourishing waters and energy to all others who also desire it and shortening the time span in which it actually arrives. And we want to leave you with this. And we're very pleased to take questions as they may occur. The alignment of the sun to the earth at very specific times has the ability to further activate and magnetize cosmic potentials. And the reason for this is the earth is not only um, an access point for human restoration and, and crystallization, but it holds part of your past lineage where enlightened civilizations walked the earth and had a deliberate interaction with solar energies, knowing how to capture them and utilize them in the essence of their soul, utilizing them within their cellular energy and crystalline water. We see that solar activation is starting to take place in greater and greater intensity. And we see this as one of the most important aspects of your physical realignment as well as your higher um, uh, crystalline um, activation. Because when Earth has reached a certain point in her sonic vibration, meaning that the Schumann has reached a harmonic that is purposely aligned with Solaris, there is no stopping what humanity is able to create and accomplish. And much of this has been to the detriment of your soul's evolution, not being able to permeate through the source field that is now active in your personal hologram. In eternal gratitude and constant faith, we hold this gateway open wide for all of you to step through as you make your own decisions to live in peace and harmony. And we're very pleased to take questions where you may have them. Okay, my question is, okay, so as the earth becomes more magnetic and we awake more conscious, more conscious, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of photos and a lot of uh, just different images of the moon. And exactly what is the moon? If the earth is magnetic, what is the moon? 
We look at the moon as having evolved, uh, especially over the last several thousand years to be something quite different than what it was long ago. And we will explain it this way. Earth itself is a, is a magnetic draw of multiple fragments of light that have become material in nature. So any planet or star, for example, is a consciousness, uh, not unlike if you were to create in your personal hologram a crystal grid or uh, a natural element that holds vibration. Because all of those things came together in the same space, they would begin to function as one and begin to see themselves as a collective, as an identity. Well, the moon itself, we believe at one point, uh, was very similar to this. It had a consciousness and was drawn together by multiple elements and created magnetically. But there have been many atmospheric changes that have taken place universally. And especially the Earth itself has found, um, we'll say the Earth has found itself in a location in the universe that is quite different than where it is heading now and where it has been before. So because of this, consciousness is affecting all things close to it. If you widen the perspective of your personal hologram, plants, crystals, and rocks out into the universe, what you'll find is plants and stars draw each other. There is a magnetic relevance to them that holds up a grid and information is channeled or exchanged because it's very important. So we can say, for example, at a time when Earth was very close in proximity to Pleiades, it was because there was so much relevance to the Pleiadian star system on humanity that there was a symbiosis, a relevance. And the moon is very similar. Yet what we look at in this um, uh, atmospheric change has a lot to do with deliberate distortions, especially toxin-laden uh, chemicals, but also the way in which you have been manipulated visually and otherwise. When you see, um, for example, a photograph of the moon looking as if it is not truly um, a physical planet or, or a celestial body, it is because there is a mirror reflection of that, that moon that has been uh, distorted or put into effect knowing it has very important properties and connections to the human psyche. Uh, Any time the moon is at its fullest, for example, we know that humans understand there are great anomalies that happen with the emotional body and with the mental body, and patterns begin to show themselves on the earth. We think this has been jeopardized because what um, we often refer to as a more reptilian collective has taken advantage of these energetic influences and attempted to modify them and shift them into forms that aren't beneficial for you or directed the earth on a path whereby the moon isn't in its most beneficial location for you to reap um, all of the benefits of what we've stated in the previous Pleiadian example. So we're getting at the crux of your question to be, is it real or is it not? It is certainly a real entity and consciousness, but not unlike humanity, we believe it's been somewhat genetically tampered with and altered. And we do believe that there has been some um, disingenuous reflection of the energies of the moon to earth that aren't in your highest and best interest. All of this being said, we look at where earth is headed today. So because humanity has raised its consciousness and because there is a shift in dimension, Earth, Sophia herself, is, is finding its way to a new location in the galactic grids and will be surrounded in close proximity by celestial beings, stars, and planets that are best suited to continue that consciousness-raising activity. And this is something that happens in, in all aspects of, of universal evolution. So we look at the future as holding a more genuine relationship to understanding what's happening on this planet and knowing how certain elements have been misconstrued and utilized to the benefit of a select few. Part of my own shifting personally 
takes place kind of first as an intellectual understanding. I can hear it five or six or seven different ways, and then it's like a light bulb finally goes off and I get it. One of the things I really find that I don't get, and if there's a way you can provide any kind of insight. So the whole idea of our carbon DNA and the crystalline DNA. I sort of understand that in the concept of children coming in more crystallized. And the words are there, but I don't have a vision. I don't know how to see it in order to allow that to go in a little further. We are Michael, and we come to make this earthly relevant. Because although there are many complex definitions of what lies within the DNA, the only thing that earthlings must understand is your ability to put what you know into physical action is what creates the variance between crystal and carbon DNA. So when you are looking at the difference between perhaps a, a crystalline or cosmic child, there is no resistance to what they know in terms of their cosmic access or gifts, nor do they see barriers for putting it into motion on the planet. This is very um, uh, similar, of course, to all children when they come to the planet because there is nothing that holds them back belief-wise other than what they are taught. The difference between having a high crystalline DNA and, and that which is not, is not allowing those beliefs to stand in the way of what you are here to do. Not because they aren't existent on the world or in your family unit, but because they don't have any relevance in terms of the, the information that you are accessing. So we will give you an example perhaps of how this may work in your linear timeline versus a very pure and crystalline child. And, and we see you as pure and crystalline yourself, but we also see you as coming into a different experience whereby some of the third dimensional density was necessary because you experiencing that gave you the relevance to understand who you are today and how you interact with these children that are now coming to the planet. But often, it's the filter through which you see your reality that holds the carbon and crystalline DNA separate. So if you imagine them as fields of light, the difference between perhaps what you are saying and where you struggle and the time lag it takes for you to understand and that of a crystalline child is the deliberate time space that you've put between those two aspects of your technology. It is not because the carbon is necessarily negative or wrong, but because it is so focused on earthly experience that it tends to be more physically and materially relatable. So often the lessons that humans think they have to learn are perceived to come at the hands of physical decisions or consequences. But what the crystalline DNA conspires to do is not teach lessons or have to force you into physical or material to grow. It draws what is needed in a moment's notice. So these are the variances that you are working with in the DNA. And the only thing that you must do yourself in order to shorten that lag where the two come together is to have more faith and trust in what you know because it is often the questioning that goes on that delays the integration of DNA strands. When we are questioning outside of the cell or we're placing judgment or conditions on what we are here to understand or grow from or learn, we begin to walk in a circle whereby source energy gives us similar lessons or experiences, not because source wants us to suffer, but because it is the most beneficial thing that source can do is to help you more by giving you opportunities to see yourself in the same light over and over again. Because stagnancy is not something that you are meant to experience as a human soul. So anytime you're stagnant in one area, it should be an alert system to you that you are perceiving more in the outer world as a construct of um, uh, inability to grow than what lies within. 
So a crystalline child has not necessarily integrated the DNA strands, and this may come as a surprise to you. Crystalline children may come in with 12 strands of DNA crystallized in a very uh, high vibrating container to retrieve galactic and akashic information. But it doesn't mean that it's something physically relevant that they can put onto the earth. And this is the problem that we're seeing right now. They're not in fear of it. They don't see anything standing in the way of them necessarily doing it. But what they need is the support of humanity to help them make the decision such that it looks however it is meant. Because these are often things that have never been seen on the earth before. And sometimes in trying to force what ideas and creativity is flowing through any source field, we, we put it into a very limited box. And that limiting box prohibits all of that beautiful info, information um, uh, highway, super highway to come together and lock in. And this is what we see ultimately taking place today. We don't think it's so much that you haven't had the aha moment until it's taken so many times to receive it, but it's that you don't believe that that aha moment actually came and you question it. So it has to show up for you in so many different lights that move you into ex its acceptance until you finally believe it to be true. So belief becomes the most simple answer that we can offer. Uh, and concise answer that we can give to this question because it, the belief system that these children come in with is not affected or tainted so much by the outer world. It is simply known. <clears throat> I have two questions. The first is how can we open ourselves to compassion uh, for everything? We have the Magdalena Collective. And we don't think that it's important to open yourself to compassion so much as to believe that it is who you are. Because compassion is often looked at as an activity. And yes, of course, when you are being compassionate, you are directing energy in a certain way. But that energy is what comes from you. God itself is who you are, and you are transfixing God into a very unique structure so that it can be shared with others in a very unique way. If compassion is something that you are striving to achieve with others in the outer world, the anomaly that it cannot be found only comes because it is not within. So this is the starting place. It is the core for all outward expression of compassion. And this is what we see most in humans today, is that they have become so unwound from the truth of who they are based on evaluating it against certain criteria in the outer world that is very false, that it is difficult to now find it in the outer world. And we very gently offer this analogy that when there is someone who you are having a difficult time holding compassion for, if you are looking at this person from the highest level possible, from that pivotal point of God consciousness, you see into the reflection of yourself. And so first, it is important to go into the self and find the areas where it does not flow, where it cannot yet be attained. And not to work on those areas to rid yourself from because this is the biggest deviance from compassion that we often see in terms of taking the path of, of judgment. Anytime you are attempting to rid yourself of something, you are acknowledging that you are not perfect and divine. And in any acknowledgement of this imperfection, you are now going to continue to model it and see it in the outer world. And we believe this is exactly the definition of what you see most today. The lack of compassion and love 
in the ability to communicate and share ideas or simply accept each other for who you are, a sense of diversity. This all stems not from some construct outside of you. That construct is a manifestation of your consciousness in all aspects. So when we speak often of hierarchies and working with those, we look at the only reason for the outer hierarchies that have been put in place and sustaining themselves to the degree that they have the ones that still remain within you. And this is a very easy fix in our mind because it only takes the love of whatever is imperfect and the acceptance of what within you you believe is yet to change that in a moment's notice alchemizes whatever cannot reach compassion. Thank you. The second question is, how do you say that? This is Mary Magdalene. The vibration of surrender is, is a very interesting one to consider on a physical planet, especially at a time like this, because it is often looked at as not upholding your sense of service to let go of ideals and visions that are taking place both collectively as well as within your family. Surrender and ignorance or ignoring are not the same vibration. And we want to start there because some people believe that surrender means to bypass what is taking place in your personal experience. This is not what it could ever be. We actually see surrender more as total and complete acceptance of what is in any moment. Because when you are not in a state of surrender, you are in so much resistance of everything in your life that you are holding yourself separate of source. And even if things are not perfect, even if they are difficult or challenging, when you come to a point of acceptance with their presence in your life, this is the surrender that moves you very quickly outside of the realm of resistance and restriction that opens the floodgates to receive. These are where immediate insights and downloads come, but also where what you've already put in motion in non-physical begins to land, ground straight into your reality. Now, we know this is a lofty goal to actually accept the things that are happening on your planet. This may seem to be a lack of respect or regard for those who are struggling, who are hurting, who are without comfort or resource. But we see also that so much of what's happening is this equilibrium that we've spoken of in the previous question, whereby your judgment that you cannot resolve it all or serve it all in some way limits the pool of resource that you have the ability to tap into and actually resolve. So acceptance is not agreement. It isn't looking at what's happening and saying it is right. But it is becoming aware that sometimes, even in the most challenging circumstances, God is present. Even at times when your soul is moving between um, a very stable to an instable position on the planet, there is an universal intelligence that is operating that you cannot see. There is a slight variance that exists between fear and excitement. And we want to put you in the realm of excitement by saying that even at times when your soul has reached the bottom of what it's experienced on this planet, the excitement that you have to experience more life is what draws in the change that you need to make. And as we are here supporting and assisting you, we see the influx of divine feminine that you are working with, showing you avenues and pathways within that are your greatest strength at a time when the outer world is showing something different. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. What is a light weaver and do most light workers have this ability? We are the Arcturians, and this is a term that it would that would be difficult for us to put into a very succinct definition because we see light weavers as working in a variety of different lights. A light worker itself has multiple abilities to work within energy fields. And anytime we are weaving light together, it can be looked at as coinciding different bandwidths of consciousness or information. And we see much of this like weaving a basket, for example. There may be different um, uh, directions that are coming together to hold the strength of what that basket is able to achieve. And a light weaver is bringing not only Akashic information from a different dimension to the planet, but finding its relevance and connection to something that it needs. This can be done very etherically and, and non-physically, or it can be done very deliberately uh, and physically. We look at bandwidths of light or consciousness as actually an organizational structure. And, and we want to explain how we see uh, working within the Akashic realm. Because the Akashic field is so massive, it holds data of all that is, was, ever, will be through time and conspires to be. And the container that you are only has relevance with certain, um, we'll say, volumes of this data for certain situations, transitions, or service. But from a galactic standpoint or, or from an earthly standpoint, sometimes it's important to bring something from another dimension and coincide it directly with what is stagnant. It is like an overlay uh, or, for example, an activation. And we'll give you a, an example of how we see this working. Sometimes there's a more conventional path that someone is taking, more third dimensionally focused. But at the same time, their soul is evolved to the point where they look at that path as no longer relevant. But because they have a belief system that holds them back from changing the path, a light weaver or a light worker may offer something to them that strengthens the ability to move that actually creates a bridge or coincides something from a higher dimension that they have existed in in ancient lifetimes or otherwise, and brings it into their personal energy field. And this is like a light worker or an angelic being, even your higher self at times taking your hand and guiding your soul at a time when it seems most confused and overwhelmed. We are in great, um, gratitude for those on the planet who choose to take these, these mentoring and, and healing paths for humanity, but also acknowledge that they come in many different lights. Can you explain the significance of sun gazing? Yes, we are the Pleiadians. As a Pleiadian collective, we look at your sun very differently than what many of you do. Of course, we know that you're very focused on physical and non-physical health and resilience. And, and certainly, interacting with the sun will support these areas of your reality. But not unlike the Akashic field, we actually see the sun as a storage bank of information. It does have a very dramatic connection, uh, or we'll say significant connection, uh, with your crystalline DNA. So there are vaults of cosmic information that exist in your crystalline DNA that have their direct match in what the sun provides. Think of it as a harmonic alignment, whereby there's an opportunity to raise something up into your awareness and integrate it immediately. So when you are practicing this ancient technique, which has actually evolved differently in a variety of civilizations on the planet, 
you're not only receiving the the nutrients and and the the light that your body needs to support healing and to activate consciousness but you're becoming more cosmic in form and again we look at cosmic not as any better or worse than being human all humans are cosmic in their own right but think of it as bringing you back into a, a higher vibration than what your physical body has been able to hold or ascertain and this can have a variety of effects on physical and non-physical uh, experience many of those who are sun gazing are able to effectively channel and are using the tool of their pineal gland to accentuate any other um, chakra point and access portal to data and information that they are very uniquely possessing. We also look at the ability to move energy through the body and the central channel and meridians uh, becoming more efficient uh, when you are deliberately interacting with these, these solar rays. But remember, it is also a knowledge bank, a storage bank that has the ability within your crystalline DNA to move you forward uh, into a different timeline, a different dimension, changing your entire human life if you so choose it. So it is not that we are here to state a reason that you would begin to sun gaze because we know all of you have different priorities and different challenges that you are faced with. But we actually see this practice as coming back to the planet right now because it will inevitably reinstall you to the perfect purity of what the essence of your crystalline DNA represents. Where many of the, the toxic laden and, and programmed um, um, vibrations of your carbon DNA have held you captive. The breath in concert with this is an added benefit. So if you are choosing to sun gaze and doing this in concert with some breath practice, you may actually accelerate um, all of the benefits that we have already mentioned. This question was sort of answered earlier, but maybe you can add some detail into these nuances here. What is the role of the moon in our solar system, the earth, its cycles, animals, plants, and human beings, especially women and its men and the menstrual cycle? I've heard there is not a moon and it's not what we think it is. Is it real? Can you elaborate on that? We are the Council of Light and let, let us bring some clarity to this. And we'll, we'll start with looking at nature and to explain a very complex uh, vision that we see of the moon and how it interacts with your structure. Nature has a rhythm. It has seasons where it goes dormant and where it is recreated and rises again. There is cross-pollination and connection of roots beneath the soil. The animals that interact with nature have a very distinct purpose in how it continues to thrive and how the collectives, uh, the animal collectives themselves, uh, also continue to thrive. Now remember, when we have stated this in so many different transmissions, that nature itself is intergalactic. It was seated upon Gaia and brought from different dimensions. It was not meant to be the same as what it's seen in any other star system. It was actually meant to evolve perfectly for all life that would continue to be created upon Earth herself. And this was the desire of Gaia. Gaia desired um, the flora and the fauna to be a part of her harmonic rhythm so that everything could be recreated and rebirthed and expanded through a cycle of time that never ended. Well, the universe works this way as well. And planets such as Earth find themselves, not unlike a seed in the soil, in, in the perfect atmosphere with the perfect alignments to grow and to change. So when we look at humans, for example, we know that you are aware, you all have this very similar type of, of um, influence that goes on in your lifetime where certain planets and stars are affecting your vibration and are the catalysts 
for your constant movements and evolution. The moon itself is a, a, a vibrational consciousness that we believe is very important in its alignment to the earth. There is an aspect of Gaia's crystalline core that is intimately tied to the influences of the moon. And at times when the moon is present, we see it somewhat like a review. Uh, we go into the, the concept of Christ consciousness where there's a resurrection back into form and a, a soul is finding itself in the etheric realm with a higher assignment. This is what we believe the influence of the moon offers, not only to Gaia herself, but to all beings upon Gaia. But Gaia is a female-focused vibration. And we know that it's difficult to understand because you may have learned masculine and feminine balance and that being so critical to how neutrality is found. And it certainly is important that masculine and feminine balance is achieved. But in the galactic universe, there is an equilibrium of feminine and masculine energies found as celestial bodies. So the moon itself to us is more of a masculine influence that is supporting the feminine in Gaia. It is helping to rebirth and recreate and clear her own womb of whatever lies in the water that has become tainted and old and no longer relevant to what all life upon her is meant to understand and use for its evolution. This happens within the female cycle as well. Because regardless of gender, and we'll, we'll simply look at all of humanity first, you are constantly recycling energy. There are parts of you that are meant to be reconsidered, evaluated, acknowledged, purged, and brought back again to create the new. But the feminine on your planet has a very specific uh, parallel or relationship to how this works within Gaia's womb or within Gaia's core. So a more masculine influence at a time when humanity is finding itself moving from a, a, a mental and material focus to one that's more spiritual and emotional is, is certainly necessary. And we see the moon playing a very important role in how humanity's moving into this balance again. But what we've mentioned previously about the disruption in that energy and how it's been captured and reflected on the planet in ways that are not natural must come into this conversation because we do see the psyche or the mind of humanity being most focused on at this time. We believe there's a frequency field that's been uh, installed and it carries um, the wave pattern that is very inorganic and not natural to constant resurrection or rebirth or cleansing. And it holds you in a state of density where you may be recycling the same energies over and over and playing them out in slightly different ways, but never moving beyond them. What's taking place right now is something we've never seen before in the galactic universe. And it's important that we recognize this because it is not only stating how incredibly important this timeline is that you've decided to embody upon, but it also um, represents how we as the Council of Light are learning from you and what's happening on a physically focused planet. Earth herself is moving into a new dynamic position. And because of this, what may begin to happen is the planets and stars that are affecting her uh, may become uh, more intense in their effects and certainly have different um, uh, vibrational uh, qualities than what they ever have before. You may not believe that Earth is actually affecting the moon. You also often look at the moon and the sun only affecting the Earth, but that could never be true. Everything that's happening on this planet is affecting every other planet just as much as every planet is affecting this one. So there are multiple potentials here, and we see the dynamic through which much of what's been uh, disingenuously focused in terms of the frequencies of the moon becomes resolved and rebirthed and reinstalled. And all of that becomes more supportive. 
as we say this, it's important also to acknowledge that the influence of the moon is not something that we perceive as negative. We actually believe it is all in your intention and how you work with these direct influences that has every bit of potential for them to, um, or for you to reap the benefits of them in your personal life. So quite concisely, there is an intelligent and divine time within every living structure that is recycling energy and rebirthing it through your life force. The menstrual cycle of the feminine on your planet is just one very obvious example of how this is taking place. And the influence of the moon is directly supporting that as are many other planets. But ultimately we think that this is a very significant time of renewal and rebirth, whereby much of what's going on within the earth is showing the potential for an entirely new dimensional experience to arrive very quickly. And that is something that you should be excited about because it is not just those who are conscious who will experience this. It is all of humanity that will become engaged in a new experience. Can you bring in Lakshmi and ask her, please explain what's happening right now with the manifestation of abundance? Yes, we are Lakshmi and we are also joined by the Pleiadians to improve and accentuate this answer. The first, it is important to know that there is no separation between you and what you source in material. Many of you look at the financial abundance that you receive as being a physical reward or something that you are able to operate with in physical. Yet to view this through the eyes of higher consciousness would be to only see it as an extension of yourself. And this is where we believe some of the most important benefits to where you are heading lies. Because who you are becoming, your personal identity and how you perceive yourself has everything to do with how monetary abundance must also reconfigure. Because it's become such a material construct with such dark and negative imprints, it could never go with you to the new earth in this form. What you are actually doing in this moment is purifying the planet of material abundance and resource, not because it has been tainted so much that it is going to find its way outside of your reality, but because the way you look at it has to change. We see so much going on beneath the surface in terms of your ability to manifest abundance, but it could never look the same as what you are used to doing in the past. And this is the first important point that we come to make. Holding yourself in the highest regard and looking at the planet as an opportunity becomes the direct alignment to how source energy wants to provide what now matches your consciousness. And what's happening on the planet today is also something that is very individualized. Although we know there is a pattern that is emanating through this that may be seen in common threads in multiple humans and in different geographic locations. Each of you is a direct connection to source energy. And that means that nothing in the outer world could ever hold you separate of it. When we move through transitions uh, in, in our own um, uh, realm, because this still happens regardless of the amount of mastery that you believe we have achieved, we are always looking to the positive to accentuate because we have learned in so many incarnations and lifetimes that if we allow a lack mentality to come into our, our crystalline vibration, it will taint our ability to manifest far more than what we realize. 
And we know this may sound difficult at a time when there is so much to see that looks bleak or, or difficult to interact with. But you, as a soul, have the ability to acknowledge and recount every minute of every day the abundance that exists in your life. Because even at times when you cannot count it to the degree that it is needed, it is always there in some form. It may not be in the same form that you regard it to be needed. But if you acknowledge all forms of abundance every single day, what you will find is that inventory will continue to grow because this is ultimately how your vibrational alignment creates pathways for you with very little physical effort. There's a practice that, you know, is often shared on your planet of stating gratitude. But often this practice is done in such a state of resistance that you do not acknowledge the results. It is because this gratitude practice is taken on in the acknowledgement of lack that it isn't held in the highest regard. So if you are creating a practice in your life, it should be not to supply something that is missing, but to accentuate that that already exists. Even a relationship in your life that is seen as, as loving and purposeful can bring monetary abundance forward if it is constantly acknowledged and affirmed. Because it is no different than the financial currency that many of you see changing on your planet today. Experiences that you have are the greatest currency of an evolving soul. So have as many experiences as you possibly can that are focused in abundant and joyful activity because this is a currency and begins to put you in the realm of receiving that a physically focused duty could never accomplish. And finally, the inner communication that you constantly affirm and practice is sent to the source field and, ver and verber reverberates through the entire human collective. So anytime there is fear that there is lack of abundance on the planet, that fear when constantly affirmed is creating more lack. It is not the physical steps that you take that should be discounted because we know it's important as a physically focused being to do things in your life that support your family and support yourself. But do those things focused in the reinforcement of what you desire for all of humanity. Even if it is cultivating a new garden or nourishing and replenishing the spirits of a downtrodden soul because there is no difference between that activity and where your financial system and monetary uh, abundance is from. Can the Syrian and other Royal Lions star clans share more about today's 88 Lions Gate activation? We can, and we're very pleased. Uh, we as the Syrians have the ability not only to see within the earth and the meridians and the Akashic realms, as many of you do as well. But we also see a dynamic pulse that is taking place today within the hearts of all souls. There is a harmonic rhythm that all of you maintain and connect through. And as a collective, sometimes this harmonic is in a lower range and sometimes it is in a higher range. But it takes not many individuals in order to focus on this and accelerate it for all of mankind. So at a time when the harmonic balance of your planet may be showing potentials and difficulties that you do not desire, this gateway that you are currently immersed in is activating everyone to the same harmonic field. 
whereby the greatest potentials exist. And so instead of offering a, a, a mentally focused answer, we want to offer an activation, um, a focal point, a meditation for you as a group, because we think this is where the highest benefit may come. And so as we join you today, all of you who are here and are willing, find comfort in where you are seated. Uncross your legs and relax your arms. Begin to breathe very rhythmically, gently, but deliberately. As you remove the filter or the curtains of the mind and open it to unending and infinite potential. This breath signifies that your sovereignty is strong and pulsing, that it relies not upon anything outside of itself. And in its most free and sovereign truth, it flows through you in every meridian and every connection within your body, within your spirit, within your mind, and within your heart. And as you relax and we are present with you regardless of where you are, shape-shifting into form, and laying a hand gently on your shoulder. We feel the reverberation of the human heart and the energies that surge through the planet that mimic it now. And as you do as well, and focus in on them, we state a silent intention on behalf of all souls to expand it greater to raise it up beyond what it is in this moment to the 12th dimension and beyond to catapult you and all others into peace and love and abundance. And as a rainbow light fills this space, filled with colors not perceivable by the human vision. You are bathed in cosmic light. And as it surges through you, finding the perfect landing space, it becomes your source as you remember you are one with it. You are this universe. You are all bandwidths of light and color all stars and planets. You are source energy. You are humanity. You are a soul and a physical body. As we invite in Sophia, she offers now her sonic waves through the water of her crystalline womb. And as gentle and Flowing waves go outward from her core, covering the entire earth. We are now one. Not directing beyond will, but directing within it. All that is seen and unseen. All that is ready to emerge. And all that is here to support. As Assyrians, we walk with you in this time. We hold the vision for you that you cannot see. We install it within your pineal and within your consciousness so that it may be revealed slowly and deliberately over the next several days and months. With a very deep cleansing breath. And so it is. You may find yourself back into your body and rooting back into the earth whenever you're ready. The channel mentioned earlier how people see and feel energy. What if you're not sensitive to energy? How can you become more sensitive? 
We are the Pleiadians, and we believe that every human being has an extra sensitivity with energy that is yet to be uncovered. But often the reason it is not revealed is that there is too much comparison to how others are retrieving it and less focus on presence. And so our, our greatest advice to you is to become more present moment, moment focused. It is often the desire of a soul to take on processes and programs that bring them closer to spiritual enlightenment, gifts, or realizations. And although there is a time and place for this, if it is not accompanied by pure presence, the work that they have done and the advancement that you have achieved is never ascertained. So our advice is to become focused at times with the breath, deliberately on the zero point, whereby you may pick up signals and synchronicities to how your unique structure operates. And there are themes that may be observed within your past, whereby creativity and very special, special phys physically focused gifts have emerged. These are gateways or clues to help better understand what these sensitivities are. And we'll provide a, a few examples. The artist at a very young age who has been suppressed was actually showing a very deliberate sensitivity in how it perceives energy. Uh, the one who connects with nature and desires to be close to the water and the plants is uncovering a very unique and special gift to better understand and communicate with the earth. And those that are very adept at movement, dance or yogic practice, are also providing a pattern for the soul to perceive how it most connects with energy. As you look at these patterns in your life, you may deliberately bring them back to help explore and understand better how you are becoming more of your extra sensitive self. On the 4th of August, a big explosion with conflagration happened in Lebanon, in Beirut, uh, taking many lives. The same day, different conflagrations happened in other countries around the world. Can guides give any insights on these events? Yes, we are the Council of Light. It's important first to understand that everything that happens in physical is a manifestation of consciousness. And although many believe that this answer is negating the truth of what happened, there could be no more relevant truth than what we have just stated. However, we do acknowledge that what is taking place right now is a process of deconstruction. There are aspects of your planet and earth where souls have collided, where collectives reside who have a very important assignment and karmic relevance to what is going on globally. We look at some of these very uh, succinct and, and parallel experiences as having Akashic relevance. When the earth has experienced wars, for example, in the past. These wars have a slight deviance and difference in how they have shown up in physical. They have manifested in different ways and in different geographic locations with perceived different reasons. Religious, for example, or over very abundant resources or finances. But what we observe is a constant evolution of time that runs in a spiral, whereby history repeats itself and timelines collide. This is not for humanity to suffer, but it is for humanity to interact with the past using a newfound consciousness. Now, because these events have all taken place at the same time. It does not mean that humanity is holding a lower consciousness. 
we actually believe that there are conflicting energies right now in all of humanity that are causing Akashic anomalies to take place. And if you look very closely at what is happening on the planet today, you will find so many historic timelines embedded in, in different dimensions coming together in the same timeline. But also new and higher cosmic insights and creative opportunities to interact with something other. This could be no more perfect. And we say this with great respect because we know many have lost their lives. And it is never, of course, the intention of this time of the spiral of time to ever create destruction. But it is the focus of the energy that is having the outcome that it does. We must admit, as we observe what is taking place, there is more of a propensity of consciousness on the planet today to flow into the attention of fearful timelines than there are those of peace. And until that comes to a, a balancing point, we regret to say that there are more potentials from the past that may rear themselves again in ways that humanity does not wish to experience. It is important though that we see what's happening as an opportunity to actually prevent these future manifestations because it is the amount of compassion and the amount of attention that we put on those situations in the light that we desire that has the recipe for changing them in the future. It isn't the fear that we focus on that they will happen again, but our desire to send whatever is most appropriate to hold space for those who have perhaps transitioned or are dealing with the challenges of the aftermath of these situations that puts us in the realm of moving beyond them. This is important to note in all areas and we believe ties very nicely to the previous question addressed by Lakshmi and the Pleiadians, whereby we are not attempting to ignore what is taking place, but it is all in how we interact with it and project through it that has the potential to either repeat it or alchemize it. So this is a time of great turbulence that is taking place vibrationally, where some of the old structures have become so unstable that they've created fear in the human collective. And that fear is matching Akashic information from the past that is coming through the spiral of time and being collided with in different geographic locations. So as we've mentioned, it is important to not be in fear. And so we want to share what we believe ultimately is the outcome of all of this, because if this is an area that you can remain focused upon, you will find yourself moving out of the realm of where much of what has already been put into your potential um, uh, experience has to, to ground. When there is instability in the grids, what this means is information is being sourced from different dimensions. And that is okay because to be multidimensional, it is important to source information from a variety of different sources. But when you look at the planet, and you're attempting to retrieve information from sources that are telling you the truth and who are directing you into angry outcomes. You are being challenged in that moment to reconfigure your own personal truth to that of what you desire. And this is the only way that we see the grids actually drawing pure light and more beneficial Akashic and cosmic information that's needed to actually move you in the right direction. There's a time period that transitions uh, involve whereby humans are moving from one dimension to another and it can be very confusing. But these periods of confusion are meant to be addressed in the inner sanctum where 
many of you are reaching outward and attempting to stabilize. We see that outward source and reflection of information being one of the biggest problems that humanity has today because it is deliberately creating a collective human focus on things that you do not desire. So we go back to the original message of the Syrians today, which is to carve out the experience daily in your personal life that you desire while holding space and focusing on those who are in the midst of challenge. And this, we think, is the perfect balance for maneuvering the earth between dimensions and reconnecting and installing the universal grids in a very beneficial and supportive way. Can we match the sacred geometry of plants with sacred geometry of the human body to gain a better understanding of how the energies of plants and humans intersect and be able to use plants more effectively as a modality for healing? Yes. Um, we are working with the flora and the fauna and the dolphins, and I welcome all of them as they step forward. There is no separation. There is no difference between the sacred geometry you perceive within us and the geometries that exist within your own bodies because it is all the same. And this is why when many of you move into a more natural type of interaction with Earth, you begin to crystallize and accentuate your consciousness and spiritual gifts because what you are actually doing is bringing your entire physical form back into resonance with nature and earth. We look at nature as a portal whereby information is accessed and communication is exchanged. Perfect geometries are portals. And when these energies are matched or utilized to support perfect symmetry, what you will find is the harmonics of the human body are effortlessly moving in the direction of their, their highest manifestation. This is equal to longevity uh, physically, but it's also equal to telepathy and exchange in the higher realms. There are so many of you who are healers on the planet who are meant to work with these different geometries and patterns and utilize them either physically or non-physically to focus humanity in the direction of reclaiming their purest crystalline state. And we are so pleased to work with all of you. Can the guide speak to the current events regarding pedophilia and the best way to deal with this information. I'm feeling very heavy with all with all that has come out. Any insights or guidance would be greatly appreciated. Yes, we are the Pleiadians and we are also very concerned about this issue and, and how it is manifesting on your planet. And we will start by saying that what we look at as the core or the crux of this issue also exists within all of humanity, as difficult as it is for us to relay this, because we know it's important for many of you to hold those responsible who are actively pursuing or, or, or um, uh, involved in these actions. But it's very similar to other criminal acts, such as war, for example. Anytime there is um, a pattern, that pattern will continue to grow until it's interacted with differently or interrupted in some way. And the basis of all of this comes from lack of love. We have addressed often in past transmissions the concept of narcissism on your planet and where it stems from, or uh, traumatic abuse, physical or otherwise. And it is always lack of love of which this stems. But when we look at what's manifesting on your planet, we also see that very positive intention is being channeled through very limited communication. So although it is your desire to change this immediately, and it is ours too, 
it's important to understand that there is a web of consciousness and karmic interplay in this entire situation that must be considered. There are soul contracts. There are patterns of energy, Akashic archetypes and otherwise that are all converging together. So although it may seem like a very black and white and linear issue, there are so many things embedded within it that humanity is working out right now that we believe go well beyond what you think needs to heal this. The reptilian influence that we often speak about as well is a part of all of you. Genetically, it is hybridized to the point where many of you don't even realize the amount of perhaps envy or jealousy or criticism of others that you carry that continues to reinforce it every day. This in itself is a basis for how these energies perpetuate. But also in terms of source and the reversal of this timeline, many of you have been directed into very distorted versions of how this must come into um, a, a healed state. And we begin by saying, if you acknowledge a source, single or otherwise, outside of you and put the responsibility upon that source to wipe the planet, the planet clean of all evil, you are negating your greatest power. So it is the currency that you expend in these very distorted stories and not to, uh, to put them in the realm of a story because they are not true, but in how much of what must play out to heal is presented that totally limits the way in which we see humanity resolving this problem. Because it truly, although quite different than what you may see in a developing country, uh, is running very parallel to humans who don't have the resources that they need to survive or to those that find themselves in the scenario of war. When we look at what's happening dynamically and energetically, we acknowledge that there also is a purging of density that's taking place. So there is a, a rising up of information that has been dormant and has gone hidden from humanity. Many of you perceive that this problem is now coming to a head because it has gotten so great, but we actually see that the problem itself has been present in the same form for a very long time. You are now just becoming more aware of it and in, in entangling yourselves in it more deliberately because it can no longer exist in the form that it's been based on the vibration that you've achieved. So there are some because of their karmic past history and patterns that are meant to interact with this directly and will have some deliberate focus, non-physically or vibrationally, to support it. And others who are directed to other areas are holding space for it to change. And we see the next two linear years as being extremely significant and uh, very focused upon this issue as well as many other similar ones. The information that's coming to light may at times be a push-pull or a negative positive of how the timeline itself uh, must be resolved. But anytime there's movement, movement is a positive. And this issue in and of itself has been stagnant and, and the same for a very long period of time. So to continue going in the direction of healing it, your only focus must be on what you desire. And if you are communicating this to others, um, especially those who do not have the resonance of consciousness to understand it in the same way, it's important to share it as well uh, in ways that are aligned with outcomes that you desire. There was a transmission previously that came through Mary Magdalene and many others who are similar about compassion. And if it is spoken of, shared, interacted with, it is not the fighting up against it or the finger pointing that will change it, 
but it is the compassion we have for all involved and how we interact in compassion that has the ability to bring it into the light that it was always meant to be. This is sort of a dually faceted question. Um, the, the first part, and this is in like kind of uh, the concept of Hinduism, but so through, how do we, to get to self-love, we have to see ourselves, the, the divinity within us. And uh, in the same light, um, the, the term namaste means, to paraphrase, the divine within me acknowledges the divine within you. And how do we, as Mahara, the Guru Maharaji says, see everyone as God? And how do we get into the, uh, the heart space to see uh, not only ourselves, but uh, everyone and everything is a manifestation of the one? Yes. We're actually working with a variety of beings, Master Jesus, Baba Ji, we have the Buddha, I welcome all of them who are here. What we most acknowledge in this question is the separation that, that you are bringing to our attention. Because any time that there must be a judgment of another or the self, the perceived separation is what's causing that judgment to take place. And it is extremely important that you acknowledge as a separate soul how special and unique a manifestation of God you are on this planet. The most critical interruption of that, that we believe stalls those who desire to hold this view for others is the ego. Now the ego, as many master teachers have taught through time, is something that must be abolished. But it has only been taught this way because the ego has been accessed by those that know how to work with it in ways that hold you weaker than your highest potential provides. The ego is a, is a construct of not only the mind, but, but the psyche and the subconscious. The ego is very easily trained and yet it is meant to flow freely and to constantly acknowledge yourself in the light of whatever presence you find yourself in. Not to the degree that you are better or worse than, but to the degree that you've drawn the experience to begin with. So there is a state of questioning that we think is a very simplistic way to operate here on the planet that sets you up to ensure the ego is perfectly aligned and the psyche and the mind and the spirit is able to perceive the separation, but also the connection between you and all others. Because this is the state we believe that humanity bo most thrives in. Because to be separate of, but yet acknowledge there is no separation, has been the goal of our teachers in our personal evolution. So this line of questioning is not to take inventory of where there is anything that is insufficient or in abundance, but to actually find the areas where there are complete resonance. And this may seem a challenge because many of you are presented with such opposites in, and contrast when it comes to family members and friends and humans in the outer world, especially today. But what that contrast is providing is more opportunity for you to go deeper into the realm of your own egoic presence. And to see that unless we can honor the self as the other, regardless of what the other chooses, we cannot have any basis for oneness or unity. Now, many of you we know will go into the analogy of criminal acts. This is not the vision for humanity and has happened nonetheless. But even the judgment of a criminal act loses the perspective of why and where that criminal act originated, which goes beyond the life of that soul and often carries through a, a, a 
generational pattern that they accepted when they arrived. So this is the wholeness or the oneness of unity. It is taking responsibility for everything that we see and attempting to find the commonality within everyone that we interact with through the beauty and the uniqueness of our spirit. Even if that commonality is that we can appreciate that there's a reflection of our differences, that is the best question to ponder. How is the individuality or the uniqueness of this soul showing me my own uniqueness, the areas where I thrive and where I add value? Again, not in an egoic sense because one could ever be any better than another, but because they drew each other due to some similarity, some cohesiveness that brings abundance into the earth. And there is meaning behind every interaction that is had. So instead of perhaps questioning wonderment or being in a state of wonder, is a, a vibrational attunement that we can offer that can support you when there are very stark differences that you cannot shore up and physical, but being in wonder of what those differences are and of where they come sets the tone for enlightenment and retrieving everything that you need to understand the similarities as well as the uniqueness that pulls you together. Could you conclude the session, please? Yes. This is Syrians again. We are so pleased always to be with you in this space that we've created together as a circle of light that remains unbroken regardless of the ending of this transmission. As all of us have been here with you, we have acknowledged the beauty of your soul and it is our greatest request that you acknowledge it within yourself at a time when it is most needed on the planet today. Go in peace and many blessings. All right. Thank you. Thank you for